So, yesterday was Friday the 13th, one of my favorite, favorite days. Um, and a lot of great stuff was announced. If you were on Zombie Popcorn at any time the other day, yesterday, um, you would have seen that Sideshow Collectibles is coming out with a new, um, a new Friday the 13th figure, a Jason Voorhees figure from the from part three which i'm really 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 excited about because um so why part three what's significant about part three well part three was in 3d um so of course okay. you, know, you know that's always going to have an awesome hold on me on that um another awesome thing is that is where jason got his mask oh okay i remember now yeah so that's always all Excuse me, that's always great. Um, but the, the figure itself w looks pretty amazing. Um, let me see Who did the figure? Sideshow Collectibles did. Um, okay. And let me see if I can pull it up. I had it, I had it queued here for a second. Um, okay, I, I have a link. I think I have to go see it now. Yeah, it's, uh, it's on um, Zombie Popcorn. You can check it out. Uh, okay. Let me show everybody here. Let me open up this photo here. If you're if you're in the chat room or the video room, you can actually see the um, the screen and see the preview of it. This is not the act, th this is a preview of the actual figure, um, and as you can see, that it, ha it has the the classic part three mask. He's gonna have an axe and a machete. Um, the mask is gonna come off, um, which I'm really excited about. This is they just recently came out with the remake, Jason Voorhees. And it it looks really awesome, but I didn't want to buy it because I w I'm not as attached to the remake Jason as I am to the Part Three premium format figure. Um, so I'm wow, this looks awesome. I know. So that um, so I'm definitely going to have to pick this one up when it when it comes out. Um, so wait, this this Jason from the remake that's like from the new movie. That's that was the figure from the new movie. Yeah, the the old one. This the one that they're doing now is from part three. Okay. Ah, uh, he does look awesome. I'm so, so I'm so excited about that one. Um, I can't wait for that. And I I want to play a quick video um about what far, what Jason Voorhees uh, Friday Thirteenth does on his days off. So let me cue that up and let's play that real quick. <laughs> I loved it. I think it's awesome. <laughs> my my favorite part was when he's choosing the outfit. So many choices. It is pretty awesome. He's just sitting there trying to figure out what to wear. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that was awesome. Um, or when he comes back home and um, he places the machete in the umbrella thing. Yeah. Every <laughs> every shakes it off. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. Pretty cool. Yeah, I'm. I'm. The figure looks so detailed. It's pretty amazing. Oh, I want it. Oh, the, yeah. I know. It's it's way awesome. Yeah, like the way. Uh, if you look at the back of the head and the way, like the mask is like, uh, like, 
like in his skull it's just like awesome it's it's great yeah i would i would gladly pay like 75 dollars for it oh it's probably gonna be up in the 200s oh really yeah because the one they did of the remake um is oh this is 76 66 a month yeah that's that's the payment plan oh. if you go for that one oh. So. Oh well, it, it's worth it. It looks amazing. It really does. Um, the the remake one looks beautiful. I, I love how he's standing on the dead, bo- all the mutilated dead bodies for the the remake war. He's. Mm-hmm. I'm curious what they're going to do with the um with the new one. I, I really hope they put the legendary axe mark in his and his mask, because that's what I love about the mask for some reason. I'm so drawn to that. For it's bizarre, but I know. But I'm I'm really excited about it. <laughs> it it's really cool. Yeah. I love it. So when that when that comes out, I'll have it up on Zombie Popcorn, and I will have my order in. So <laughs> so you are getting it. I have to get it. I mean, it's everything yeah. of three D and horror all together. So yeah, it is amazing. Is it like a limited thing to like yeah, a certain? They only do a certain number of them. Wow, uh, pure collector. It says four hundred. Pretty awesome. For the for the new one or for the um, the remake? Uh, this is the remake. No, in, in the what is it? No, this is the the, the one in, from the third one. They're saying they're only doing how many? It says limited edition, four hundred. Oh really? So yeah, that's even going to be even better. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope you get one now. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to pre-order that one. <laughs> Yeah, looks awesome. Yeah, it does. But not Friday Thirteenth for everyone has not been exciting or awesome. Um, Why? What happened? Well, I was I saw on um, the Daily Mail um, in the UK that a thirteen-year-old boy was struck by lightning on Friday the Thirteenth. But what made this really bizarre and really stand out from anybody else being struck by lightning was that he was thirteen. The boy was thirteen years old. He was struck wow. by lightning. He was struck by lightning on Friday the thirteenth at thirteen hundred hours thirteen minutes. So that's like one a.m. one thirteen. So he was he was thirteen year old boy struck um, by lightning at thirteen thirteen a.m. or thirteen <sighs> thirteen hours. Um, I I I somehow I don't think that's a coincidence. You don't think it's a coincidence? No, 13, <laughs> 13, 13 on Friday the 13th. That's kind of crazy. I just think it's funny how news articles, I mean, we're doing it now, but we'll go out of their way to um, dig for news on Friday the 13th. <laughs> They're like, oh, something <laughs> strange going to happen. Somebody just pay attention to every little detail. <laughs> where, where does it come from? I, I'm not familiar with Friday the, thir- the 13th. Like, why is that unlucky day in... Well, it depends who you ask. I mean, a lot of people say that it stems back from, you know, the pagan beliefs before um, Christianity took over. Okay. Um, And then Christianity rolled in and perversed the day. Um, But, I mean, it just really depends on what region of the world that you talk to because there's so many different reasons why 13 is unlucky. Even There's even... People who you know are into ma- mathematical schemes of it, and which makes thirteen unlucky. So the the, fr- the Friday the thirteenth would be bad. I, it's it's all. I don't know what the real answer would be for that. <laughs> okay, so what about the movie? How did the movie end up with the name Friday the Thirteenth? Well, I think um, they just d- just picked an unlucky, you know. Friday the 13th. Hey, what's up, 3D Movie Man? He's in the chat room, and he says, what's up, Age? Solar? He says hi to you. <laughs> hey, 3D Movie Man. Um, and I think it's just all the murders, you know, happen on Friday the 13th. Which, technically, one of the flaws of the movies is that sometimes the murders go on to the next day, so which is not really Friday the 13th, but... Well, I think you should stop watching them then because it's not the true thing now. <laughs> I Don't you think so? No. It's a good movie. <laughs> it is a very good movie. And then if I, start... I like I like the remake too. The remake was good. The remake was real I was really impressed with the remake. 
Yeah, I, a lot of people like are not happy with it, but like it was really good. Like I, I enjoyed it. I think if you take it for what it is, it turned out to be a pretty decent movie, and the cast was really good as well. Yeah, it wasn't as strong as the remake for Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but it was a good slasher movie. Yeah. I mean, Can you I, believe I did not see Texas Chainsaw Massacre yet? Shame on me. Either the, the part part one or part two. The, or any the of them. remake. The remake. That's what I'm saying. Because there's two of them. Yeah, I didn't see either, which is really, really embarrassing. Yeah, but I will get to it pretty soon. Uh, we're going to have to end the conversation with Hassan tonight. I, um, so the rest of the show... <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I promise I will watch it soon. Just leave me on. Don't cut me off. Uh, you're cut off. No, just oh, God. <laughs> just kidding. We're going to put you back on there. Thank <laughs> you. But yeah. So, um, what was I going to say? We were talking about. Oh, the, yeah, the, the remake the of. The boy. Huh? The boy who got hit by a lightning. Yeah. So that that's really bizarre that, for one, that that everybody would go out of their, their way so much to um, find that m- much detail to report a horror story on Friday the 13th and two okay. for that to actually happen to... But there's a flaw with this story because, like, in the story, it says it was 1 a.m. It wasn't 13 hours. Well, that would be 1 a.m. Yeah, but, like... uh the is it like military time? Yeah, thirteen is p.m. Actually, not one a.m. Yeah, one a.m. would be zero one. It would be p.m. So. Okay. Yeah. Crazy. Well, I'm glad I wasn't that boy. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not that guy either. <laughs> Hey, but if it happened to you, like then you could say, like, yeah, this is destiny. My name is Jason, and I love these movies, <laughs> and I got hit by lightning. This is not a coincidence. Well, I would rather be on the other end of the the Friday the 13th, Jason Voorhees. I would rather be the invincible mass murder um, person, <laughs> not, not the person being hit by lightning on Friday the 13th, because <laughs> then that would fall into the, the Friday the 13th the series, not the actual slasher film. <laughs> Hey, but maybe if you were to get hit by a lightning and, like, you know, maybe you could become invincible. You could get some sort of power where you don't die, you know? <laughs> and then I would become so Spider-Man or something. So maybe that's what was supposed to happen in the first place. We need to find this kid and interview him. Yes. <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah, really. Wow, interesting story for sure. It's crazy. You sent me a link, what was it, today or yesterday, about the new Deus Ex game? Yes, I, so, like, well, I, I played the first one a long time ago, yeah. and I played it in 3D, um, because my NVIDIA card came with the 3D glasses, and it wasn't the greatest 3D, but it was a 3D, and, like, I, I loved the game. But it wasn't, the second, it, was it in 3D back in the day? Because that was a long time, that was back when I lived in Texas, and I would play it on... PC. Yeah, but I had this thing for my uh, NVIDIA card where, like, you could make any game in 3D, oh, okay, like, yeah. with the glasses that you plug into the back of the video card, yeah, you know? I remember that. And it was pretty decent. Like, it was it was 3D. Like, I got lots of headache playing it, but the game was amazing. Yeah. So I was really... I was, I was a little skeptical for the fact that this wasn't done by the same guy who did... Um, the original games, mm-hmm. but like after I saw the gameplay trailer, I was blown away. It looks amazing. It I, look I cannot wait. Well, I want to play the want to play the uh, game tr- gameplay trailer real quick, so the people Go in the f- chat room and the people watching the 3D version or 3D version. And just FYI, this game trailer contains a gameplay. This is not like cinematic trailer. Yeah, this is gameplay trailer. It's uh, yes. This is Deus Ex: Human Revolution. Twice the scum and half the space. Go 
Cybersecurity specialist named Ari Van Bruggen. He had a job go bad, and now he's on the run from the people who hired him. You don't even know who you're going up against, and you think you have a chance? Van Bruggen's very popular. You've been paid to forget that name. Wang says your boys were snooping around that dockyard. I'm just looking out for you. Once I set them off, the guards will come running and give me free access to the ship. Shit! That game looks awesome. <laughs> that does look amazing. It's hard to believe. <laughs> I was really skeptical, but after I saw this trailer and like the way the game is styled, the yeah. story, the char character design, it's one of my most wanted games at the moment. It looks amazing. Yeah. It was. It's and, definitely when when it came out on PC, the very first game when it first came out on PC, I was addicted to that game. I love the fact how it kind of switched up, you know, role-playing game with, um, you know, almost, you know, not a first-person first first shooter. shooter. Yeah, yeah, and it was just, it was like, it, it was, this was way before, uh, the listeners don't know the history of this game, this was way before, like, Fallout 3 or any games like that. This was the, one of the very first games that allowed you to, to merge both war worlds of a, of a um, role-playing game to a, um, you know, first person shooter game it was an rpg first person shooter and it's like it seems that all new games are going into that direction like from fallout to like oblivion and like it really was but like the pioneer in the genre yeah and just like if you look at the environment and if you look at the world and if you look at the people in the trailer it just seems like it's going to be like super interactive and the action looks good and i just hope it delivers and everything that it promises it it's amazing yeah i i played it for hours um, i don't even i don't even think i completed it uh, back when i played it on pc it was very long it was and it was just, there was there was a slight learning curve to it too cuz you had it was like it was one of the first games that i played where you that was that you know that had both elements and so it kind of took me a, a little bit to get to the point where i could say okay I have all of these new technical things that I can apply to myself, but what what is going to be more effective for me, to, you know, in the first person shooter aspect of it? And then you ha you had to hack the computers, you had to have all this stuff, and it just brought a whole new element. And I think it's also one of the very first games that you didn't have to run into the battle. You could you could find the world was so big that you could yeah. find alternate routes around in everything in the game. And it, so it just made the possibilities endless. Or what at the time when the game came out, it felt like it was endless. I mean, now I guess if I, I guess if we played it now, it would be, you know, we'd be like, oh, this is boring. But yeah, but you know, like it's the same as like if if you go back and play Pac-Man now, like I, I just it can keep me, you know, because yeah. there's like much better experiences. But for that time, it was revolutionary, and it's it 
it inspired so many games from like Bioshock to Fallout to Oblivion. Like it, it, it was amazing. Yeah. And it's really sad. I was really hoping to see Warren Spector, the creator of the original original game, go and like do this. Actually, this is a prequel, I think. But he actually went to work for Disney, and he's working on Epic Mickey, which looks pretty good. But like. Uh, I have confidence that this team can actually like make this happen and can like bring the glory that this game deserves. Yeah. Because the second one wasn't as amazing as the first one. So I didn't. I, said I, I never played the second one. Yeah, I played it for a little bit, but I just couldn't get into it. Yeah. Um, plus, I didn't have Xbox, and it was it was at my friend's house. So. Was it an exclusive think, Xbox game? The second one. No, I think it was for the first Xbox and PC, I believe. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. I could be wrong. Yeah, I think... Because yeah. I went through a long period, um, and I think it was probably about the time that game came out, that I, I wasn't playing games. I was either on the road or doing something else, and then I wasn't around. Yeah, I went through that period as well, and that, that was... And I was also, like, just really into PlayStation, and that's how I somehow missed it, you know? Yeah. Um. But, yeah... The the third Deus Ex is coming and it looks really good. Yeah, I can't wait to play it. Do you know what consoles it's coming out on, or if it's coming out on what platform? It's PC, PlayStation Three, and Three Sixty. Okay. Yeah. Because the graphics look good. Um, not... I'm I'm not sure what engine they're using, um, but it looks pretty amazing. Like, um, if if the ge- if the real game looks as good, like as good as that, you know, like, it, it will be amazing. Yeah. I, I just love how the world is, like, everything has that kind of, like, yellowish, like, shiny um, thing. Like, it looks really futuristic, and the everything from the clothes the main character wears to the glasses to the weapons and gadgets, it, it looks like a super futuristic James Bond or something. Yeah. Uh, that's what and I liked about have... the first one is, was the environment, and because it was it was way different from yeah, the other games. Can you imagine now with the new technology how this is going to look like? I know it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Because because if you've seen the new um, Call of Duty game, the Black Ops graphics on the trailers, looks, that they're, looks pretty amazing. It looks beautiful. Oh, real yeah, quick, I... real, real quick, um, before I forget, I want to tell 3D Movie Man. I know you're upset that we're not broadcasting in 3D right now and that we haven't broadcasted in the last two shows, but I am next day, I think Monday, I'm going to have some downtime and I'm going to do nothing but make fix it so we can be back in 3D because we need to be back in 3D. So That's it. hang I with us, 3D movie, I, man. <laughs> I, I can't watch the broadcast anymore because it's not in 3D. You can't watch What's it? What's wrong with you? <laughs> I, just, I just don't want to. Yeah, no, it's... It feels wrong. It, it it is wrong. It's just my 3D camera though has just decided to only have one lens work. <laughs> and speaking of oh. only one lens work, last week if y'all watched the show or listened to the show, when I was unboxing this, my new Nook, it slipped from my hand when I was doing the unboxing. <laughs> oh. I, and not only did it did it slip from my hand, but it landed on my one of my USB cables, broke it off off the motherboard so I'm now minus one USB B plug in so I had to actually buy a splitter that's on its way now <laughs> oh my god so well <laughs> nothing happened to the nook no because it was still in its package it was still in its protective package it just slipped out of my hand during the if you go watch if you go watch the last week's broadcast on YouTube um, you can actually see everything happen the best part of it though is Paul's face when it happens. He's like, "Oh, <laughs> it's so." He's like, "Oh my god!" So if you get a chance, check that out. It's pretty awesome. But um, but it it, 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 not, it completely knocked out the video for the rest of the show. Though. But we're back now, and um, so hopefully we'll be good. Nice. And while we're speaking so- of three D, uh, you're always you you text me um asking me about 2d 3d conversion films um the step up was there, yes there is a I, there's a movie coming out um by Wes craven and it's hitting the theater october 8th and it's called my soul to take um oh uh, i haven't heard of it it's it's really haven't hasn't gotten that much 
um, publicity with it. I don't know why. I, I guess because there's not a trailer for it yet. But um, what what is it about? It's um, it's about a serial killer who um returns to his home to stalk seven children. It's really funny because it's Wes Craven and the, and the um the storyline kind of sounds like, sounds like Elm Nightmare Street. on Elm Street. Yeah. <laughs> but oh, 3D Movie Man saw Step Up 3D. Hawson was going to go see it, but he Oh, but, how was it? Yeah, definitely tell us how it is. Let me get get this out of the way real quick. Um but it's about a about a serial killer who who died or whatever or everybody thought he died. Um comes back to kill all the seven children that were born on the day that he was killed that he died that the serial killer well, died well i mean despite the similarities like it sounds actually kind of really cool yeah you know like uh adult killing kids i mean that's, that's pretty awesome that's, that's always awesome what are you talking about <laughs> yeah it's the only thing is like i'm very like uh, disappointed by Wes Craven because after the Elm Elm Street, you know, like uh, I just I just think he's overrated. He haven't hasn't done anything that was like as exceptional, you know. Yeah. Hey um, Jen, what's up? Welcome to the chat room and zombie popcorn. But that is Hassan talking. Sorry, she just asked, "Who's that talking right now?" <laughs> Sorry. Hey Jen. So yeah, yeah, I I totally agree with you. Um, he hasn't done much after that. I mean, he has done stuff, but nothing that stood out. Like wasn't Night he? Nurses. Did he, did he do the scream? He did that, right? Yeah, I guess that stood stood out. But I yeah. I didn't I didn't like this. I guess <laughs> I, it it was commercial. I guess the first one was kind of exciting, you know. So I guess it was successful. But like I mean. It was a commercial success, but critically, you know, from my perspective, it's not that great. Yeah. Um, but like, I don't know. This is 3D, and the premise sounds really good. So I don't know. But it's a 2D 3D conversion, though. Oh, is it? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I'm excited anymore. Yeah. No, that's that's the whole thing. Because when I went to go see Last Airbender, it was horrible. 3D Movie Man saw Clash of the Titans and was, oh, it was horrible. It was. It was horrible. Like, I just don't understand. I think uh, me and my friend, we went to see Alice in 3D and we went to see Clash of the Titans in 3D and she's never seen any other 3D movies. So she tells me, like, Hassan, I'm really skeptical about this. I'm not sure if I want to pay money to go see the see 3D movies. And I'm like, well, you know, like, you just haven't seen a real 3D movie, you know? So just like by that example, I'm afraid that this movie industry is actually going to burn people and they will like, why would I pay for extra money for something that's not that great, you know? Yeah, no, and it totally will. You should totally tell your story about your Toy Story 3D experience. Yes, so like what happened is I love Pixar. Uh, I've seen everything except Cars and I've seen Up and that was in 3D and that was an amazing 3D. So like... We were already getting ready to go see Toy Story, and one of my friends was like, "Oh, you shouldn't go see it. The 3D sucked." And like, I'm like, I just dismissed her. I was like, "Whatever. What does she know about 3D? I'll go see it. It's Pixar, you know. How how can it be bad? It's Pixar, you know. They wouldn't sell themselves short." But anyway, long story short, the 3D was awful. Like at least like 75 to 80 percent of the movie wasn't in 3D. And the scenes that were in 3D, like, there was no depth to them. It was so lame. I was, like, so pissed off. It was, like, like, Alice was kind of okay. Clash of the Titans, like, made my eyes hurt. It was awful. And, like, I didn't have it. I went to the, you know, the manager of the theater, and I complained. And I was like, hey, uh, can we get our money back? This wasn't in 3D. And he's like, well, what do you mean? Like, so I explained the whole thing and like, we got our money back. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and I just asked extra like $3 per ticket, you know, because the movie wasn't in 3D and uh, he, he got us a refund for everything. And then the next day we went to see Despicable Me in 3D and that was amazing. Yeah, so that movie looks awesome. Yeah, it was really good. And the, th the 3D was really amazing, especially they do something really awesome during the credits. So Don't tell me, though. Um, I'm going to wait to see it. Yeah. 
uh, it was a, it was an amazing 3D movie. Yeah. So yeah, Toy Story 3D sucked, but Despicable Me was great. So it's funny that you said that it sucked because T- Toy Story 3 is the highest grossing Pixar movie right now. <sighs> well, the movie itself wasn't that bad. You yeah. know, I didn't think it was as strong as the first two movies. Uh, the movie itself was really decent, but I just, you know, like sometimes when you watch movies in 3D, the picture is much darker, yeah. you know, and that's, that's Pixar movies, <laughs> yeah, Pixar movies are usually very vivid and very colorful, you know, so I just felt it was a stupid sacrifice to make um, for for a Pixar movie, like to to force people to watch it with glass with glasses and to use that vividness and the fact that the movie is so colorful, just yeah. so that they can actually sell extra tickets. So that's the reason I was like pissed off. I would have preferred preferred to see this pretty decent movie in two D, you know, yeah. so that I can experience like it in like much better in, in better manner. Um, but it's okay, you know, like what's well, it's stuff like that that money. will kill the three D movement. Um, is when they when studios and um, just want to half ass do it. They just want to pump out. 2D conversions or just half-ass 3D, and it, and it pisses people off. Nobody wants to go back to see it. Well, see, the thing is, I I'm really pissed off that Pixar would sell themselves like this. But I guess they are under the contract, and Disney can probably do whatever they want. You know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's an it's an embarrassing. And 3D movies, man says that How to Train Your Dragon is the best 3D movie this year. Yeah, that's a 3D this cartoon. Year. Yeah. I and I have to yet. agree. I've seen it in IMAX, and it was pretty amazing. Really good. He like also said scene. that the dancing was cool, and the plot was pretty weak in Step Up 3D. <laughs> <laughs> Which is well, the the thing about Step Up 3, this plot about Step Up 3D, it's like you really have to take it for what it is, you know? Yeah. Step Up to the Streets was amazing. <laughs> I haven't seen any of the Step Up movies, so I cannot comment on how amazing it is or how not amazing it is. Well, I just think it's it's a personal thing, you know? Yeah. But 3D Movie Man said he enjoyed it, I guess. Or did you say that? He just said you saw it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there I want to go see movie. it. Um, there is a 3D movie coming out this Friday, and I have to go see it, and it's... it's Piranha 3D. It's coming out this Friday. Looks amazing. Oh my gosh! Did you see the nine minutes um, that was leaked out from Comic Con? No. Oh, you, maybe I need to pull that up. Let's talk. Let's talk about stuff. Why I um, look for this video? Because you you have to see this. It's really amazing. What's this? I know this is kind of like a B movie, but like, what about the budget? How is the budget for this movie? It it's amazing. Uh, it's really good. Um, yeah, I, 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 I like that, like, um, I, there's a lot of, like, if you go into Netflix and you browse through, like, B-movie horror section, and there's, like, so much crap, you know, but then occasionally you you come across, like, a gem, you know, something like, um, oh, uh, what's that movie? I can't remember the name. Uh, with S. Which one? Uh, like it's happening in that little city. It it's like, like big budget B movie. It's, oh God, I can't remember. Slither, Slither. Oh yeah, you know? that's yeah. That was um a James Gunn movie. Yeah, he played like, uh, Romeo and Juliet. You come across some like a B movie on that level, and it's like amazing, you know. And yeah. Piranha Three D seems to be in like that genre, you know. Well, I think it's it's going to be awesome just because um, they they took they did what if you're going to do a remake of a movie, they did the the way you should do it. You should do it in the way in, the, in this uh, I can't even call it and the way that they did it because it's just so amazing. It's so over the top. So when, when you watch this leaked footage, you will freak out. You would just go, yeah, this movie's going to be amazing in 3D. This this is a half. You have to go see it opening night, and and this is shot in 3D, right? Um, well, no. <laughs> 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 it, 
<laughs> it is. So I mean, this was conversion. This was conversion, but all the piranha is CGI, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. If that makes sense. Okay. Well, I see. That's the reason why somebody would think that, you know, the Toy Story three would be an easy conversion, you know, because it's all CGI. But actually, it wasn't that great. But regardless of the fact whether it's 3D or not, you know, like the movie itself looks really awesome. Yeah. You know. I'm trying to find one. A lot of the videos have been taken off, um, taken down. Oh, I think I found one. Let me see. But yeah, I mean, after watching the first nine minutes of the, okay, this is a shaky cam footage because it was taken at Comic Con. Okay. Um, let me get it queued up. This this footage was a handy cam at Comic Con. Um, so it is shaky at times. It's not the best. I mean, it's leaked footage, but you get an idea of how amazing this movie is going to be when it opens this weekend. And if the 3d is as good as it seems, it's going to be because when I was reading before I play it, I was reading about the director and the people involved of doing the film is the detail they went to, to make 3d work on this, the detail that they went to of, of the floating eggs that you'll see at the first of this video to make it seem like it's really there in front of your face. I mean, it's pure gimmick. And I think, I think they execute it very well. So here is the first nine minutes of Piranha 3D. Okay, let's see. Oh yeah, there is nudity in this video, so if you're under 18, please do not watch oh, it. Oh, <laughs> I can't watch it. I will be offended. <laughs> I know Sears got a plug. Uh, I can't get it. 
favorite songs is coming up now. This is amazing. The over the top gore is just so <laughs> awesome. <laughs> oh my god, I, I can't wait to see it. So, uh, this here is crazy too. Her hair is all caught in the blade. I know, I really hope it doesn't suck. I hope the 3D in this movie is so over the top awesome. Well, you know, I mean, Alice wasn't horrible, it was bearable, so... You know... It may not be that bad. I mean, look at this though, look at the gore involved with this. I mean, this is the way they should do the remake, because the first one was awesome, and just in the terms yeah. of death and stuff. But they took it over the top, they took it back to the... to the way... Movies were back when we were kids watching it when people didn't yeah, give a crap. It, it does look like that. I, I love it. it. It looks amazing. And it's so stereotypical from I'm like, <laughs> you know, everybody get out of the water, you know, and like it, like all the crazy teenagers and it's just amazing. And, and this is like, watch this scene here. This is where like it's <laughs> this to totally crazy insane. It's just, it's just over the top. He's like, I'm out of bullets. What do I do? Of course. <laughs> you grab the motor. <laughs> you 
carries her and like she's half. So that's gonna be like, awesome 3D footage right there. <laughs> man, I have to go see this. When does it open? It opens this weekend on Friday. Ah, uh, this coming in Friday. Here's and look at the the vomit coming at the <laughs> screen. Come on, that's awesome. <laughs> oh my god, this is the best weapon in the movie ever. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh. A piranha comes out of her mouth. Oh, this is amazing. That's gonna be good duty. You have to be. Are you going to, to go see this weekend? I have to. I have to. This is gonna be amazing. I don't know if you caught it there, but that piranha just spit oh. out uh, his penis from his mouth. <laughs> Wow. There it is. So that was the first nine minutes. Well, I they say it's the first nine minutes, but um, I think it's so heavily edited. It it looks like they just took scenes they wanted to show. Okay, I hope they didn't like just show the best scenes from the movie because I want to be surprised. Yeah, three of the movie man said he's not gonna watch because he wants to see it this weekend. I don't blame him, but like I felt obligated to watch it. I know, you know because, because I couldn't see it. I mean, because even it's I. Th- I think it's going to be so much fun just because of the the over the top kills and the deaths and. Um, it looks amazing. Yeah. Um, even if the 3D is not that great, I'm looking forward to see it. Yeah, but I'm gonna be I'm gonna be let down if it's a, one another cheap 3D conversion. Yeah. Way let down on it. I'm I'm very cautious. I haven't seen the last Airbender yet, but um, I, I I want to go see it. But like, I don't think should I go see it in 3D or no? no do Probably not. not do right. Not see it in 3D. Uh, don't waste the money to see Airbender in 3D. <laughs> Jen no. says that was amazing. Are you gonna go see it, Jen? I mean, how awesome is that? But um, that's that's just totally the way they should do the movie. Yeah, I I agree. Um, and it, you have to let me know if the 3D was good. Do, are they like playing the Piranha in 2D as well? What's that? Are they playing Piranha in 2D as well? I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. Are they gonna have Piranha in 2D? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure they will. Okay. But why would you go see it in 2D? Well, if you say the 3D sucks after you see it, then you know. Well, yeah. I mean, go sucks, see it in yeah. 2D. Well, if it sucks, you shouldn't go see it. You should sh- you should tell the studios that you're not gonna pay for half-ass rip-off of 3D movies. Which I did, remember? Yes, I did. I know, but I'm telling everybody else. Um, yes, I agree. Yeah, he, 3D uh, Man says he needs a gore fix in 3D, and I do too. It's been too long to have a good. You know, to see a good gore scene in 3D. <laughs> I know. I like, the last good gore movie in 3D was uh, My Bloody Valentine. It was decent. It was all right. Um, yeah. Well, the, the, the murder scenes were awesome, you know. The, so. the kill scenes in Final Destination 3D was so much better, though. Yeah, which I still have to see. And I was actually asking you if you remember whether I should watch it in 2D or not. You should watch it in 3D, but... Um, just for the kill scenes, but if it's only available to you in 2D... Yeah, I'd, I'd it's be... only in 2D, and I read the reviews, and they were horrible, and after the third one sucked ass, I was like, oh, should I watch this or no? Like, I just wasn't sure. Well, they're doing another Final Destination movie. Wasn't this the Final Destination? No. They're, they've already, they're talking about doing another one right now. Wow, it's so, probably because the this one made like lots of money. Because it was three D, three D saved that movie. <laughs> well, that, like, that's probably what happened. Um, three D movements is we watching three D, but that's what they're doing with the Saw franchise. They're saying that this is the last one and it's going to be in three D, but there's already rumors out in the mill that they're uh, working on a, another one. Of course they are. The, those movies make more. Mu- the budget is like pretty low, and each new one makes like more and more money. So yeah. like as long as uh, the saw makes enough money, and it looks like the three D one is going to make enough money, you can count on the fact that there will be 
um, another one after oh, they're that. Definitely you know? another one because they, they've been inducted into the Guinness Book of World Records for the highest grossing series franchise of of a horror movie. Which uh, is a franchise, so So I was actually I just seen the first one and for some reason I I have this crazy idea where I should rent the the other five. Was it like there's like six now? I'm not a fan of them. I don't know. I'm just like I just want to see it. I don't know why. Like and I'm trying to decide whether I should see it or not, you know? I'm gonna go see the three D one. But Yeah, me too. But do you think I should catch up before I see Saw Seven in three D? I don't really think that it's gonna really hurt the storyline. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I have this crazy idea where I should rent all of them and just watch them. Well, you, I mean, if you wanted to do it, but um, yeah, I've only seen one of them and I've only seen half of that one, so. Yeah. Okay, so I have some information in regards to the final destination, mm-hmm. um, the fourth one in three D. It cost forty million dollars production budget and I think that includes marketing budget as well. Yeah. And it made hundred and eighty six million dollars worldwide. <laughs> and that's, so that's a lot of money. Yeah, and that's because of it was in three D. It wouldn't I don't think it would have done that if it wasn't in three D. And and surprising fact is it made like more money like uh, in foreign market than here, it made sixty-six million dollars like domestically, and one hundred and nineteen million like worldwide. Wow! So yeah, I'm pretty sure there will be another Final Destination yeah, they're, they're because on it, these right? numbers <laughs> like are pretty good numbers, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's that's the name of the game, though. They make money, they keep doing it. <laughs> exactly. That's what happens. Well, did you see on um? I turned on VH1 by accident, and there's this show called um, The Scream Queen or something. Oh, yeah. And they are actually, like, it's a competition, and they're, like, trying to find a girl that will star in, like, the next Saw movie. And it was just bizarre, like, to make it. It's weird, but it was kind of interesting, you know? Well, it's it's a good time for um, horror fans because it's, Right now, I think it's the most popular it's been through any time in history. I mean, that the horror it's it. the the horror movie industry is just just taking off, and more people are becoming interested in it. I mean, there's more horror conventions popping up every year now. I think there, there's so many I can't even count how many just popped up this year. Um, so, do you think this has anything to do with Twilight series? You know what it. I'm sure Twilight had played a part in it to bring in a ju- younger generation, but I also think yeah. Harry Potter. I, I know it's not a horror movie, but I think Harry. It's po- pretty wicked, though, you know. Yeah, but I think it, it kind of brought it in and opened up more younger audience to the idea of you know of the fantasy sci-fi world, which is obviously anytime you jump into the sci-fi world, you're going to jump into the the horror genre mm-hmm. just because they're so closely connected. That's true, and, and you know what? Those Harry Potter movies—they're pretty wicked. I know people who take children to see it, and the kids are like, "Oh my god!" Like this, this is scary, you know? Yeah, I mean, they, they are pretty dark, and and I think that's what has the appeal to it. I mean, plus everybody yeah. addicted to reading the books, um, and then yeah. you know, compare you know not compare but um, combine that with the Twilight series, also bringing in the youth culture. And I think that's why the the remakes right now are so overwhelming because we're at that time where we have such a large youth culture involved with the horror movie genre because of Twilight and because of movies similar to that. Um, So they're trying to bring in the new blood for Friday the 13th and they're trying to bring in the new blood for, you know, the Saw series and all that. So are they doing the sequel to the remake of the Friday the 13th? Dude, there's so many rumors about it, and none of it's been confirmed yet that I that I've read. So I don't know. I everything I'm reading though, it's, it's supposed to be a sequel to Friday the Thirteenth, and it's going to be in 3D. But I'm also seeing the same thing about how they're going to bring do a new Halloween without Rob Zombie, and it's going to be in 3D. I think yeah. I think everything right now, anytime that any information is leaked about any movie. Even if it's not horror, or is that it's going to be in 3D? Everything is always it's going to be in 3D, just because it's 
it's a money maker for the industry and every and the industry knows that they can charge you know extra money for the the 3d movies so th- of course the industry is going to push this needs to be in 3d because we'll make three extra dollars for every ticket made yeah it would make sense to bring fr- uh the friday the 13th again because you know it was pretty successful yeah it really well um and it, it was it it was like pretty a pretty good movie so i would hate to see it not come back so i would like to see it come back because the the storyline that's out there that's not confirmed is it's going to go into deeper detail because I, I, the remake went into showing how Jason was able to just appear you know because all the old Friday the 13th movies Jason's always just been able to appear you know right right in front of somebody or right behind them and always catch their victim no matter how fast they run and I, like, yeah. I like how the remake kind of gave us an answer how he does that because he has all these underground tunnels and he's, everything's connected. Um, and he, you know, he lives there constantly. So he has, he's very entrenched. Um, yeah. and I kind of like how they did that. And from what I understand that if they do the sequel, it's going to go into more detail about that. It's going to go into more to the backstory of the, yeah. so. Oh, why, why do you think so many people didn't like the remake? Because I know a lot of fans of the, of the, of the series were just like, we're dismissing it left and right. And I remember watching it one morning and, like, I I just had so much fun. I just didn't want it to end. It was an awesome movie. Yeah. um, I think anytime you do a remake, it doesn't matter how awesome the remake is. Yeah. I mean, because people are going to hate it. People are, people, you know, the diehard fans are going to say they hate it. I mean, because if you look at the remake of Dawn of the Dead and you look at the Mm -hmm. remake of um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, both of those remakes are hardcore solid excellent films exactly and you could google it right now and say the dawn of the dead remake and see probably the first hundred sites talking about how shitty that movie is and how they shouldn't do remakes but um, um well i i like the fact that they get you know like because i create zombie movies everything zombie i create you know yeah so sometimes I just don't understand these fans like you know like you should be happy when they give like a big budget to like one of these guys you know like to make to get their vision like come true what what was the last two it was Dawn of the Dead and what was the other one that was remade also the the dead movie or yeah um, well they've all been remade at one point in time I mean you could even but look the at one that was like a big budget one happening in the mall, that's Dawn of the Dead, yeah, that's right? Dawn of the Dead. And there, wasn't there another one that was also remake with big budget recently? With big budget? Um, it's not coming to mind. I don't... Or, you know, maybe I'm thinking of that Dennis Hopper zombie movie. What was that that was happening? Um, you know what I'm talking about? The Dennis Hopper zombie movie? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a... It, it's a it is in the series, like Dawn of the Dead series, you know, happening in Pittsburgh, and like, you remember when um, they put like the blockades around downtown, and then zombies realize they can go through water, and like, the Dennis Hopper is in it? Land of the Dead? Was that Land of the Dead? Yeah. Okay, so that wasn't the remake, wasn't it? No, that was uh, and just an extension on to the z- zombie. Okay, okay, so that's the reason. For some reason, I was under the impression that was a remake, but that, that was... Okay, I see. Yeah. Three, yeah that, that, that was a good movie, too, you know? Yeah, it, it was a good movie. Um, I mean, to an extent. It wasn't as good as the later films that he did. Because I, I went to go see Land of the Dead at the theater. I was on tour, and we all went to go see it, and... I mean, it's good, but I felt really let down with it when I saw it. Hold on for a second. Okay. Sorry about that. Welcome back. What's up? So when when did Land of the Dead come out? What's that? When did Land of the Dead come out? 
Hold on. Land of the Dead came out. Um, um, what was it? 2000. Crap, I can't even think. Yeah, do a Google on it. And that was the Ramirez flick, right? Yeah, that, that was, that, that that was, was his, like his first. Um, Okay, that came yeah, out 2005. in 2005. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I just looked it up. And the, it was a pretty big budget, $15 million. Uh, and that that's the one with Dennis Hopper, right? Yeah. Yes. It was uh, John Leguizano, Dennis Hopper. Um, and you know what? I'm looking here. The movie made like $46 million. It costed $15 million. So, so it was pretty long. successful. So that's why I don't understand. Why don't they give him... Uh, a substantial budget so he can make his vision come true, you know? I don't know. When he, he just just did um, Survival of the Dead. I did not see that, but I've seen Diary of the Dead, and it was pretty decent. What's that? I, I've seen Diary of the Dead, and I liked that. Yeah, Diary of the Dead was fun. Um, I haven't seen Survival, but it only, um, it only came out on... Video on demand, Xbox, and went straight to DVD. Yeah, I have to see it. I usually give this man a budget to make an awesome zombie, one more awesome zombie movie. You know? I don't know. You just you're you're um you're cutting out on me on that. Can you hear me now? Yeah. I said I just like wish somebody would give this man a budget to make another awesome zombie movie. Yeah. Yeah. He needed to do more. Yeah, definitely. And Dawn of the Dead remake wasn't bad at all. So that's, that's the whole topic that we started this with. Um, it made a lot of money and it was pretty decent, but the fans are just kind of like, ah, oh, no, like, you know, don't do enough more movies. And it was Zack Snyder. He's a pretty good director, you know? Yeah, he is really a good, a good um, director. Yeah, he did 300. He did Watchmen. Um, he's doing this new movie, um... I forgot the name of it. It's like over the top with those like girls. It's happening in the fifties or something. Uh, I forgot the name of it. So oh, I don't um, know. Is one of the girls baby doll? Uh, Who's doing I'm that? Not, I can't remember the name of that movie either. Um, oh. Yeah, I, I don't remember the name of the movie, but it looks pretty awesome. Yeah, I think we talked about it last week. Um, Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that, that movie looks, looks amazing. Yes, I I cannot say that looks amazing as well, you know. And I also think he is tied to Army of the Dead somehow, the remake of Army of the Dead. Yeah. Uh, I've read that somewhere on the line. So anyway. I don't think I've seen uh, Army of the Dead. What's that? I don't think I've seen Army of the Dead. Um, oh, yeah. Sorry, I mixed that with Army of Darkness, but oh, there's this movie okay. called Army of the Dead that he's kind of tied to, and I was reading something online about it, and that seems like something good yeah. to watch out for. Yeah, but um, anyway, Dawn of the Dead, a really good remake, um, and Friday the 13th, a really good remake as well. Not yeah. sure why the fans are like. Well, I just, so I just think people want to, you know, they don't. Pe most a lot of people don't like change, and they don't like stuff that they, you know that they like. They don't want something, you know. I, I guess they cling to it and say this, you know, this is this is, I I love this. This is something that's part of me. And when somebody goes out and changes it and makes another movie that could be better than what they're hanging on to, it's kind of hard for them to let go or. That's hard, true. Hard for him to understand that you know what, just because you like this movie and there's a another movie that's a remake of that doesn't mean you can't like them both. I mean, that's true. That's true. I guess when somebody, you know, keeps something close to their heart, it's a very sensitive subject, you know. Yeah. But I'm okay with it. I love the Star Wars remakes, you know, like the new special effects. I, I thought it was great. Yeah. I don't know. And, I, I try to judge a film going in on its own merits and then after That's watching it comparing it to the you know other one it's like like the nightmare the nightmare on elm street remake i'm yeah. sorry that was not that good of a movie 
<laughs> I, you know, it, it wasn't good. I had fun watching it, you know, and I don't know if I had fun watching it because, like, I, I, I was comparing it to the original one that I love so much. Yeah. And so I, I'm not sure if I had fun because it was a really good movie or just because it was fun to watch from, you know, certain point of view where like, okay, let me see how they're going to do this scene, yeah. you know? Uh, and I'm not sure if that guy was a good choice for Freddy, you know, because Freddy lost its humor and I miss that because the Freddy was always funny and this guy was kind of serious, you know? I hate Freddy's humor and I was glad that was gone. But in the film, really? while we were watching the movie, I... I kept looking around. I kind of was uh, getting bored bored with the scenery. <laughs> and I was yeah, like, um, yeah. I I didn't hate it. I I had fun watching it, you know. But I know a lot of people didn't. So I guess it's a personal choice, you know. Yeah. But um, I mean, I I dislike it for its merits as a film, not because of it's a remake. Um, yeah. Uh, definitely, there was like a lot of misses. Like, I I just thought the movie was like. I remember the original movie, it was very dark and foggy and there was a like certain sense of mystery to the character because you didn't know who Freddy was, yeah. you know? And this here, right away, as the movie started, like, they revealed the character, they showed him. Um, so I felt the remake lacked a lot of the mystery. Um, it was very vivid and very colorful and... I missed that that fog, the the darkness. But you know, I guess maybe if I never saw it, the original and I meant to see it, I probably would have liked it way more, you know, because it is a pretty cool character and it is a pretty cool concept, you know. But that that's that's one thing that I kept thinking about is like if I if I never saw the first Nightmare on Elm Street and I went to go see this one. Yeah. I think I would be let down because what made the first one such a good film, if we're comparing it to the the remake, is like you said, it's like it's the mystery, it's the it's the the creepiness, the 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 darkness, the you you kind of felt had a feeling of entrapment with the environment. You had a feeling That's that you true. couldn't escape, and you kind of after watching that, you kind of had that sense to yourself where you're like. Should I go to sleep tonight? You know, it kind of affected you a little bit after the movie. It did. This here rushed into it. There was no character building of Freddy. There was no background history of like, ooh, this is, this is freaky. This is this was like, okay, this is Freddy. You already know about it. Okay, this is what happened to Freddy. You already know about it. This is the people that Freddy's gonna kill. So let's get into it. You know. Yeah, it was very like kind of like. This is the formula, and let's follow the formula. We can go like that, you know. They were playing it like really safely. It wasn't stylized, like it was overproduced. Like you can probably tell it was like audience tested, you know. It was edited. Uh, it it was very commercial. Yeah, and and that's funny that uh, I was reading an article today about one of George Lucas's partners when um, they were first doing Star Wars and um, they split ways because George Lucas started going real commercial with Star Wars because apparently Han Solo was supposed to die. Really? Uh, and George Lucas didn't want to kill him because they were doing a contract with a toy company and they didn't want to lose the sale. He said that he doesn't want any of the main characters to die because they wouldn't make money um, on the toy sales. So, oh, so Han Solo, I hate that. And, th and that's why his partner took off. He's like, I don't like the direction this is going. I'm gonna go my own way. There's a good article if you just Google it on online about it, about an interview. Yeah. On it. It's it's really good. Um, and and you know, and that's, I love that's, the universe, but like, uh, it is pretty commercial, and it it could be a little bit edgier, you know? Yeah. Um. I would like for them if they're going to, because you know the the massive rumors are is that once all the theaters have 3D c capabilities and 3D is kind of set in, in everybody's home, people have the 3D ready through TVs and 3D is integrated within our culture. 
George Lucas is going to release the entire um, Star Wars episodes in 3D. He's going to do a conversion on it um, and release it in theaters and on Blu-ray, of course. And I would, uh-huh. I would love if they're going to do that to... I don't, I don't know how they would do it if they didn't film it, if they never killed off Han Solo. I, I would like to see how the original story would have spun off. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I don't, so, I don't think so what, what's possible. your uh, feeling on... Remember when the original movies came out, like the new special effects? How did you feel about that? But you talking about the new episodes? No, the uh, 4, 5, and 6. Uh, remember when the, they came out, they re- re-released them in the theaters with new special yeah. effects. Like a lot of people were outraged. I, I was excited for different reasons. I was excited because I was still, even back then, there was the undercurrent talk of that they were going to do a 3D release. Yeah. And, and this was even before the talk of that they were doing three more movies was surfacing so when I heard that they were doing this, the new special effects on it, um, I got excited because I was like, oh, we're one step closer to the 3D conversion. Um, but, of course, it, that didn't happen. But th- I was excited about it for the, the whole completely different reason. What I am upset about the conversion, or not the conversion, but the new special effects, is that you cannot get the original you cannot go anywhere and buy the original um, effects for Star Wars. You can only get the new special effects, which I would like to have both in my collection. But um, if you don't, if you don't already have it in your collection, there's no way you can go back and get it. Did we lose Hassan? <laughs> Hello. I think we did. So yeah. So while we're waiting to get Hassan back. Um, 3D Movie Man in the chat room has bought a new 3D camera, an HD 3D camera, and he just sent me a um, a video for it that, of one of the very first videos he made in 3D with his brand new um, 3D camera. So let's take a moment and watch that. This is a new video that 3D Movie Man created. Let me get that all squared up so we can get everything in there. All right. Courtesy of 3D Movie Man, you can go to 3D Movie Man at the youtube.com to view this video if you want to see it in first person. But here it is. These effects, if you got your 3D glasses on, um, they look really good. That was 3D Movie Man's new 
3D HD camera. Um, That's what's that? Yeah, it's pretty awesome. We lost, we lost Hassan on Skype, so we get, we now have him on the phone. So he may sound a little different to you, but he's here with us. Hello. Sorry about that, everyone. It's alright, but I'm I'm picking up a lot of feedback um, on you. Here, it does. Let's see if that helps it. But anyway. So that's pretty cool, 3D movie man. How much did your camera cost you? But um, so well, yeah, 3D movie man in the chat room also says that there should be an extra, not the only version. When we we're talking about, we were talking about Star Wars being only released um with the new special effects. Oh, that sounds nice. Yeah, I, I read the news today, and it said that the Blu-ray is going to be only the original movies. And I'm sure, like, a lot of fans were happy about that. But I really want to get the uh, new version of the movies on the Blu-ray with new special effects. Because I like those better. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I just think it's... I think it sucks that... Um, that directors and studios and stuff usually pick monetary value over the artistic value of, of you know their their products and I, I mean I guess that's a silly thing to say because you know they do it for money and the more money they get the more movies they can do but yeah definitely so I don't know <laughs> uh, so do you think you'll be getting the blu-rays of the Star Wars when it comes out next year only if it's in 3D, I don't know. I don't think it will be yet. And you know there's going to be a big money maker when it comes out in 3D in the theaters, you know? And they're probably working on it now. Yeah. Oh, you're back online? <laughs> well, yeah, so... um, Speaking of re-releases of 3D movies... Um, August 27th, the special edition of Avatar is, wow. hit, is hitting the screen. Are you going to go see it? Um, you know, I'm really curious of seeing it because I saw it at, in IMAX when it came out the first time around. And um, so I'm really curious to see it in a real 3D theater to see the difference, to see if there's really that much of a difference. If IMAX is always superior, which I personally think is always superior when it comes to 3D. Um, yeah. But the, on the special edition, there's going to be nine extra minutes of footage and more Pandora creatures will be involved. So I, I, I don't know if, if I'm excited that they're bringing it back out. Um, I'm excited that it's getting the longer run because if you remember, I mean, it's still true this way to, you know, today, but even more so when Avatar came out was when Avatar came out, there wasn't that many 3D theaters ready for it. I mean, there was a lot, but not to where James Cameron pref would prefer it. So it, it didn't get a full theatrical run like any other movie would, because when a new 3D movie comes out, it bumps the old 3D movie, the, the current 3D movie that's running. Um, so 3D movies had a shorter lifespan in the theaters. Um, so it's... it's there it, another reason that they pulled the movie? Because the, when the movie was pulled out of the theater, it was still making like a really good money. Yeah. But I remember reading that there was another reason they pulled it like out earlier and like James Cameron like was regretting the fact because it was still doing really well. Um... But I don't remember what the reason was for that. No, I don't know um, what the reason was for it either. I mean, yeah. that, I just, uh, I mean, this is the history with 3D movies. It's just because they get bumped b for the previous one. And it looks like we got you back on Skype, so I'm going to switch you back over. I'll help you on Skype. Bye. Got you. So we got Hazen back on there. Um, and if anybody else wants to call in, feel free to call in. Um, you're always welcome to do so. Uh, but yeah, 
I didn't. I I've, I've always thought and I've always read that it was that it was hey, bumped because of the other I'm back. because of the other 3D movies. But even if it even if it was doing good in the theaters, so I don't know. But I want to I want to play the um, the special edition trailer for the Avatar release real quick. Avatar Special Edition. Are you going to go see it, Hassan? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, the reason why I'm going to go see it is because my friend never saw it in 3D, and that's the friend that was that I was talking about like moments ago that was complaining about the fact that we're wasting money on these bad 3D movies, you know? Yeah. So I... I always wanted to go back and see it again because it was really amazing and it was really inspirational. I enjoyed it. Um, so now I have a good reason. She didn't see it and we're definitely going to go check it out. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and I'm looking forward to the new nine minutes. And um, I, I, this is really nerdy, but like I'm, I'm an interface designer and I design a lot of like uh, cool interfaces. Uh, and lately I'm doing like like a lot of prototypes for like the video game interfaces and futuristic interfaces because my dream job is to get job and like build interfaces for the movies, you know, like the stuff that they have on the computer in the movies. So one of my favorite things in Avatar was like the video screens, the technology on the computers that they were using. It looked pretty amazing. Yeah. So that's another reason I want to go back and I want to see that because it's really inspirational for me for my work, you know? Yeah. And plus so it's just a fun movie to watch. <laughs> exactly. That's another reason. So yeah, I'm definitely going back. It's it was it was an awesome experience. Yeah. And I get to show my friend the fact that three D movies do not suck. And that's a good movie to show them that it does not suck. I think exactly. the two best movies are going to be Avatar and Tron. I'm, the Tron looks amazing. Oh I'm just kind of like, I cannot wait. I'm so excited. I'm, I'm like jumping up and down. I'm so excited to see it. Um, the new trailer that was released during Comic-Con mm -hmm. looks amazing. If, if the 3D... And I, and I have so much hope for this movie. I mean, it's Disney, so I, I hope they're they're going to do us right on the 3D. Um, yeah. and I think it's going to be great. And 3D Movie Man brings up a great point. Um, Resident Evil 3D. That looks like it's going to be awesome 3D. And that, that comes out September 10th, which yeah, is really, and, really And you soon. know what? You know, when, when you see interviews with Mila Jovovich, you know, like, what's the selling point? Like, the stuff that she keeps bringing every single time? Yeah. The 3D. That's the only thing that she's saying. Like, James Cameron, Cameron's technology. So, I know. this is made for 3D, and that's how they're selling it. This... And I hope it's a huge success. Oh, I think it will be. I think it's going to be one of the best Resident Evil um, films to date. The 3D is going to be over the top. I'll, let's. I want to play the the trailer for it right now, and just so if if anybody Go has for it. it, I want to see it again. Oh, it's so awesome! Here it is. <laughs> I mean, there's no way that this in 3D will not kick ass. <laughs> If you are out there, 
there is hope. My name is Alice. Okay, that's going to be awesome. <laughs> okay, well, l- let me tell you the reason why I'm really excited about this. Um, Paul Anderson, uh, the reason this movie is like this is because it's written for 3D, you know? Yeah. Um, it Like, with James Cameron's, like, Avatar, like, the 3D was there, but, like, it wasn't, like, cheesy, like... It was just used to like bring you in. Like there was not, there was no like cheesy like things flying in your face, and it it was just like really sophisticated 3D that's used to bring you closer to the world. What to bring but you the environment? Resident Evil I mean. is written for 3D, yeah. and like so, it's just going to be this like over the top action and like zombies and monsters, and it's just going to be amazing. Yeah, I think it's going to be a phenomenal film, and I'm really excited. It comes out September 10th. Um, 3D Movie Man in the chat room says that he's actually seen the 3D trailer and it looks pretty good. Wow. And I'm shocked that 3D Movie Man says it looks pretty good. As much as excitement that I have just seeing the 2D version of it, imagining the 3D, he kind of scares me that he says it looks pretty good because I know 3D Movie Man when he talks about 3D movies. And if it's epic and phenomenal, he usually says so. So... Wow, so is this uh, something we should be concerned about? That's what, what I'm I'm reading into his writing. I hope I'm over reading into that because I want this movie to be epic. I want it to, in terms of 3D, I want it to put 3D back on the map because right now it's taking a lot of blows. It's taking a lot of hits from with the consumers um, and they don't want to see 3D movies. There's so many people out there right now talking trash about 3D movies. And if Resident Evil fails in the 3d realm it's it's not going to look it's not going to be a good year until tron comes out yeah um, which is december right because yeah because Resident i Evil have has faith such, in this movie i do too but 3d moving in needs to kind of clear up it looks pretty good <laughs> <laughs> um he said that he goes no he goes there's a lot of stuff popping out of the screen so that's always good yeah, well, that's 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 what I was saying. Like, this is written for three D. Like, it's written to have like a lots of like things flying in your face and just over the top action. And like, I'm pretty big fan of the first three. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I, I'll be there on the on the opening day. I'm. This is my most wanted movie at the moment. I I mean, if yeah, I mean, I agree with you that this is written for 3d and that's that's why i'm afraid if the 3d doesn't work the way it should if they don't do it the way it should there's a lot of fanboys and there's a lot of fans of the resident evil series and video games that will be mm-hmm. laid down if this movie fails in 3d well the, the thing is that the resident evil fans already hate the franchise you know yeah uh, and I think the movie is not geared just for the fans. You know, it's geared like is it to the general horror fans. You know, not just the game fans. Yeah. So I don't know. It's less than a month uh, away, and then we can talk about it. You know, after after it opens, after we see it, after we see the box office like results, like how how much money it made. Um. So yeah. 
Yeah. I, I'm pretty excited. I am too. I mean, it looks great. Um, I think the effects just in the trailer, the same way the effects in the trailer, the preview of Piranha 3D. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, being obsessed with 3D movies, you can watch a 3D trailer that's supposed to, or 2D trailer that's supposed to be in 3D and know if the 3D is right, how amazing that, that footage is going to be. Yeah. You know, and there's a lot of amazing footage in the Resident Evil trailer. <laughs> wow. Well, it's like, what, less than four weeks away. I'm I'm pretty excited, and I'll be there. I think we got it pretty good for um, 3D fans because we have a 3D movie coming out this weekend, um, which is Piranha 3D. And okay. Then, um, what else is coming out in foresee- foreseeable future? Well, August 27th, the weekend after Piranha 3D, is the re-release of Avatar. Okay. So, um, and that's good. And then, like a couple of weeks after that, what's when? Step Up's out already. There's another 3D movie I can't remember that's coming out in between. Oh, I can't think of it. But we have we have a 3D movie coming out every weekend, except for one weekend I think it is, and that's like the first or second week in September. Okay. And then and then Resident Evil comes out. So. Wow. A lot of things to look forward to. Yeah, totally. Um. But I want to take a break real quick and kind of do some zombie popcorn stuff. Um, sure. Because I want to talk about, start off with um, zombie popcorn's first giveaway. Uh, we had, we talked about it last week. Um, if you go to the zombiepopcorn.com and click on the, the blog post, Who Wants a Free Autumn's Offering T-Shirt and CD, and watch, all you have to do is go to that post, watch the... Autumn's Offering, which is a band on Victory Records. Watch that video. Like it. Like the Zombie Popcorn on Facebook a button, which you'll see is listed there. It's really convenient. You can just click it. And then comment on the post of why what you thought of the video. You can like it or dislike it. It doesn't matter. Just let me know what you think of the video. The contest ends August 31st, and I will pick one winner. Um, to qualify to get it one free CD from the band and one free T-shirt, um, you have to be. Wow, oh, that's exciting! Yeah, it's pretty cool. So if you if you're into metal or Victory Records, um, go check it out, watch the video, and enter in the contest. Um, the Autumn's offering, so check that out. The on the other side of um, Zombie Popcorn, let me pull, I'm going to pull up the screen here. Is the Zombie Popcorn Book Club this week's pick? is Mary Shirley's Frankenstein. And Amazing. This, I, I talked about last week um, with the book club. I want to start offering free books too because you can currently go to Zombie Popcorn's book club and get audiobooks, ebooks, and the paperback or hardback versions of the book. Um, and now we offer, if it's available for the books that we offer, the free ebook from it and this week with Mar- Mary Shirley's Frankenstein we offer the the free ebook there's two ways you can get it one if you go through audible.com through zombie zombie popcorn book club if you go through there to get the audio book you can actually get um, the ebook free if you get the, if you buy the audio book if you don't want to buy the audio book to get the free ebook you can also just go down on the page a little bit further and you'll you'll see that um, you can get the 1888 edition of Mary Frank Mary Shelley's Frankenstein ebook for free, um, and all you have to do is go to bookclub.zombiepopcorn.com, go to the Mary Shelley's Frankenstein book post, scroll down to where it says ebook, and underneath the ebook you can click on the photo here, where it's next to where it says digitalized from the 1888 volume. You can get your free ebook. If you want to buy the audiobook, you will automatically get the free ebook with the audiobook by clicking on either the special or on the audiobook section. And this week's Zombie Popcorn Book Club is Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, which is a classic. And that's a good choice. It's a good book. So, um, a classic. Yep. And then if you're in the chat room on watching the video, um, there is a new section on the Zombie Popcorn Book Club page 
on the right hand side you'll see a section that says free books and underneath it will is where we're going to start listing all of the free books from the zombie popcorn book club so go check it out bookclub.zombiepopcorn.com and get your free books or if you want to buy the hardcover you can do that too or the audiobook so enjoy so that's zombie I, ne <laughs> I never read frankenstein in english believe it or not oh really maybe it's time to reread it now maybe maybe so and you can get a free ebook with it exactly yep i just may do it <laughs> do it <laughs> <laughs> Um, I want to also go into I, earlier this week. There is a local business called Ham and Tea. They are a T-shirt company. Um, and let me pull up their website so you can see it real quick. But they are a T-shirt company, and I sat down with the two founders. Uh, both um, both founders' name are ha Hamilton, and that's wh how they got the name Ham. One member, one of the founders, is vegan, and. Wow. Uh, the other is not but so that's don't worry about the word ham it comes from their name not because they like consuming animal products but their website is ham com if you want to check it out and i want to play the pre-recorded interview i did with them um this week so we're gonna take a little break and listen to that interview com is okay um, I got two special guests here in the on the line right now for zombie popcorn radio um, the two hams both of the names are Hamilton and they are both the founders and creators of ham and tea ham and tea com why don't you tell us what ham and tea dot com is okay um, ham and tea dot com is it's a clothing line, and what it is is two or more things that you normally don't see together that possibly can get together. So pretty much what we're going to be doing is drawing a connection between things that normally aren't connected. Like, give me an example of what two things that you have um, in your clothing line that don't normally go together, but you've put them together. Okay, one of our designs uh, features, you know, presidents. And the, and the the pattern the pattern of that shirt is uh, three initials. So you have JFK, you have FDR, you have LBJ, and you have BIG. So for people that don't know, BIG is a, a rapper. But some may say he's the president of hip hop. But the other three people were presidents of the United States. So when people look at that shirt, they see different things. Some people may say they all were notorious, or they all were leaders, or they all were writers, or all of this or that so pretty much we're, we're drawing we're drawing um, many connections that normally with things that normally aren't connected so we're kind of making people think but at the same time we're, we're have cool design cool so what what gave birth to this uh, t-shirt company I mean were y'all just sitting around one night saying hey we should do this to get people to think or well actually uh well, Hamilton and I met in, uh, in undergrad at Norfolk State University around 2004, and uh, we've been friends ever since. I uh, moved to Blacksburg a couple years after that, and uh, Hamilton also moved to Blacksburg, and so we've always shot ideas around about doing various things. But uh, this past winter, uh, Hamilton was up in Pittsburgh, and he wanted to do some T-shirts uh, in regards to the, uh, the, 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 the blizzard uh, of this past year. And uh, he, he called me about it and was talking about the shirt, and then he was like, you know what? I want to do something a little bit bigger than that. Let's just do go in a totally different direction. Let's just make a T-shirt line, and then we just started bouncing around ideas and came up with the name Ham and Tea. Awesome. So, if you, people go to HamandTea.com, they can expect to find what just the store, or is there is there more to the site than just to buy T-shirts? Well, uh, Ham and Tea. Go ahead, Ham. You good? Well, uh, initially. Right now, we, we we want to, you know, have a have a blog. We have a blog on. We have a store, and we have you know different content. We have we have a video featuring a band, um, Sugar Junkies, 
and that band is actually from College Park, Maryland, they were the University of Maryland. So pretty much we wanna we wanna do is we wanna um have have content on our blog that, that features, you know, things that make people think but it's kinda of cool design as well. So it, it won't be just just T shirts. So right now we just we just started a blog, so right now we only have um, about two or three articles. And so like Ham and T is pretty much gonna be an extension of the brand. The ham dot com is an extension of the T-shirt line. We we are based with the fashion and then the shirts and whatnot, but we also want to showcase, you know, our individual side. You know, Hamilton is is a vegan, so he, he wants to put some type of, you know, food content up there. I'm really into sneakers, so I want to put some sneaker content up there. We're in the art, we're in the photography, so it's just going to be an extension of us, really. Yeah, and that, and that is pretty much the driving driving force of creating the shirts is. Not really to be, become rich and make money from it, but just to kind of express your ideas and get it out there and get people talking. Yeah, kind of yeah pretty much. Hmm. That's cool. So tell me how y'all got hooked up with Sugar Junkie, because I, I watched the video on the website, and that video is pretty damn good. <laughs> yeah, well, shout out to B-Film for putting that together. Um, we have a friend named Brian Summers, and Brian is into photography and, and video and all other forms of media. And uh, he got—he actually got into contact with these guys, Sugar Junkie, and had been working with them, you know, just doing some videos of them, just some small videos, uh, just introducing the band to the world. And uh, they had this song called Cross the Sea, and uh, they tapped him to do the video for it. And then he called us because he knew about Ham and T and asked if he could put the videos, I mean, put the shirts in the video. And heck yeah, we were down with it. <laughs> and so that's how we kind of got aligned with uh, Sugar Junkie. Very nice. Nice. Well, we'll play the um, video um, for the listeners, or the song for the listeners um, after this interview so people can hear the song. And you can, if you want to see the video, go to HammondT.com, and it's right there on their front page. And also pick up a T-shirt. Um, so you mentioned that you, you were into sneakers. What's up with that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, man, so, man, that's just the story of my life pretty much. Um Ever since I was a kid, I was always in the Nikes. There's this kid when I was like in fourth grade. This kid stayed across the street from me, and he always had the flyest sneakers on. All of his <laughs> shoes just stood out, and you know my shoes didn't stand out. And I was like, "Hey, what's going on with my toes? What's up with your toes?" And I started talking to him, and and he was like, "Yeah, these are Jordans and whatnot." And I told my aunt that I wanted some, and you know we couldn't afford them. But the following year, my dad ended up buying some for me, and ever since then, I've been collecting sneakers and. And just being all about sneakers, I actually listen to a sneaker podcast. I post sneakers <laughs> on my Facebook page, and and Ham and T. I really wanted something to go with my sneakers. Yeah, and it kind of satisfies that, that that requirement for me. So, how many sneakers do you have? Uh, well, it, it ebbs and flows. Uh, I actually gave away about fifteen pair last week to the Goodwill. Oh wow! Uh, so around, I'm 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 around like thirty five, forty right now. <laughs> We gotta get some photos up on Ham and T so we can see your collection. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, they'll definitely be up there eventually. That's awesome. And what about you, other Ham? Uh, you mentioned that you were you're vegan. What got you um, involved with becoming vegan? Well, I was always, you know, into health and always eating healthy. So, I was, you know, doing research over the years. Eventually, I, I just transitioned my diet. First, I was stopped eating pork and beef, then I was, I was eating chicken and turkey, then I was eating just fish, and then, then vegetarian, then veganism. So, and, and, and it was kind of kind of ironic, ironic that um, my name is Ham, and I know not, I'm a vegan, so people always just, you know, crack, crack a joke about that. So I was like, so initially I was like, I really don't want to name this company Ham and Tea because most of it has our name in it. Yeah. And then plus, I, you know, I said Ham, and I don't, I don't eat Ham. So, but, but the name was just too sticky. It was just too catchy, and it, it made perfect sense. So we still hey, we, have to, we have to go with it. Well, if anybody lives in the uh, Norfolk, Virginia Beach area, and you uh, see him um, on the streets, you see him with a, a teapot that he carries with him, and it has a sticker on there. It has the Ham and Tea um, logo sticker on there. And it's definitely eye-catching. That's kind of what got me talking to um, to him to get him on the show and stuff because I was I was like, what the hell is this? I mean, because I, cause I, I didn't know you were vegan, but I knew you didn't eat that much meat just from our environment that we see each other in. And um, so I was really puzzled by it. I was like, wow, how can a 
vegan vegetarian have ham and tea written all over it. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the tea bag thing is really taking a, a life of its own. We, uh, Hamilton approached me with, he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm passing out tea bags. I'm like, what are you doing? I'm passing out tea bags. We don't sell tea. He's like, no, they have stickers on. That's what we're going to do. I'm like, oh, man, that's sweet. That's pretty nice. That so nice. pretty. We kind of tea bag the town in the sense. <laughs> Put a new definition <laughs> to the tea party, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I brought home one of those tea bags, and my wife is like, why are you carrying a bag of tea in your pocket? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, we're promoting it then. We're trying to, we're trying to quench your thirst, also, also, yeah. baby. It's all, it's all good. That's awesome. <laughs> we're gonna totally feed you. <laughs> That's great. So, uh, so uh, go ahead. Yeah, no, 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 another thing I, I feel I want to mention to the to the listeners: the, the best way to view the site would be in a Firefox or Safari. Uh, for some reason, Internet Explorer does not agree with our site too much. So. <laughs> So yeah, definitely. Just don't, if you if you have Internet Explorer on your computer, just delete it. Get rid of it. It is one of the worst browsers in the world. So just if you are if you're if you're listening to this podcast using Internet Explorer, just pause this, delete your Explorer, download <laughs> Firefox or Chrome, and then hit play again and go to hammond2.com. <laughs> so I see on your site if you go to the store um, you have currently four designs up one that you already talked about the president's design and then you have the classic design which is just your logo of the ham and the teacup um, can you explain the uh, the other two the artist and the turtles uh, and the hair and more hair well, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll explain the, I'll explain the green one oh, okay. the, the green shirt is kind of symbolic of you know, that reminiscent of the Ninja Turtles. If you see a shirt, all the, the names of each turtle was represented in the color of that bandana. So, for example, Jersey Green, and it says Leonardo in blue, and Donatello in purple, and Michelangelo in orange, and Raphael in red. But underneath that, it says Picasso in white. So, pretty much what it is, 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 is to get people to think, like, hold up, was there a fifth turtle? And if there was a fifth turtle, maybe it could have been Picasso. So it's kind of like throw through for a loop, especially when they're drinking at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty much that, that's the ham and tea effect. This is the ham and tea, tea effect again. You know, you know, you have the Ninja Turtle, and then you have a, possibly a fifth turtle, or you know, just have five artists. Like it's up to you to decide what it means, and that's yeah. kind of what ham and tea is all about. You know, just get people to think again, and you know, with what well, we want to do, cool designs. They're very nice, and you and, can see uh, you can see that shirt that, also in the um... the hair shirt was uh, actually our first shirt that we did, and it's kind of an introduction to the world uh, to, to what ham and tea represents. So they had the uh, different colors, purple, pink, and uh, blue color. And we, we, on the shirt, it has rows of hairstyles, plain white paint and different hairstyles. We got a mohawk, uh, uh, a standard speed, a Caesar, a pompadour, a spike. Uh, we have various hairstyles on there. And what we want to show is that usually when you walk into a room or you walk in an area, uh, depending on where you are, you may be in a room with people of like hairstyles and people that are alike. So sometimes I walk into places and it's all guys with low haircuts or it's all girls with a certain style. But in the world of ham and tea, we want to encompass everyone, all races, all creeds, and everything. So we show this shirt, you know, this shirt is representation of the world of ham and tea. So we get along with everybody and want everybody to, you know, come to hamandtea.com and experience what we do. Very so, nice. that's pretty much it. That's what the hair shirt is. Nice. So, how do how do you create the shirts? I see that they're on American Apparel. Um, do you silk screen them, or yeah. how how are they printed? Well, right right now we we we're outsourcing, but we're, we're, as we speak, we are in the process of okay. purchasing our first our first printing press. So we will be printing our own shirts. Okay. Very soon. Are you gonna be doing that with silk screen or? Yeah. Hello? Yes, yes, it'll, it'll be so scary. Okay. Nice. So what are the future T-shirts? Can you come and give us a hint of what future thoughts and designs coming from him and T? Hello? Hello? That was there. Did we lose him? Uh, yeah, that's probably what I lost him. Let me hit him up again. I 
and we lost him. <laughs> Hello? Did we lose you? Yeah, I don't know what happened. I was talking and then <laughs> no. I wasn't talking anymore. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't know what happened there. That's all good. Oh, yeah. And I was just asking, what is the, um, what should we expect from uh, in the future? New designs or anything? What should we um, be looking forward to coming out from him and T? Well, what we're going to be doing in the upcoming weeks is adding a lot more content to the website. We're actually going to start getting a lot more active on the blog and uh, uploading videos and things like that. And pretty much, you know, like a grand opening to the website. The website has been up, but it's gone through several different changes. And right now we think we've just about found the right formula for what we're trying to do. So we're going to relaunch it in a sense and um, just open it up. And as far as shirt designs, Brother Ham over there. Well, well pretty much a few of the we have coming up. We want to still put on that have a effect where, you know, you know, having a pattern, but at the end breaking the pattern and saying, see these things, they don't go together, but they may be put go together. That's kind of, we're going to keep those people on the wrap. We're going to just kind of look out for them on the website. <laughs> yeah. So the website is, is fairly young, fairly new. Um, but y'all started the Him and T t-shirt design this year, right? Or has it been around longer? Yeah. No, we started about the, the, around the spring. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's, fair, it's fairly new um, in terms of. Um, everything, the website and the t-shirt designs. You got a lot of shirts out already. Yeah, yeah. It's really fresh. We're just trying to, trying to you know, put a lot of things out there once to get the idea out there. And now that we have some things out there, we're going to slow down a bit and, you know, hone in on what having to is a, a little bit more. Just hone in a little bit more. Yeah. To, yeah, to establish the brand on this having We want to put some things out there, but now we're going to really establish what this is so people can just you know, find something they could kind of tether on to it and, and become a part of this Hammond team. Nice. So has the reception been pretty good? I mean, have you have gotten a lot of people interested? I noticed that y'all were on Wavy Team, which is the local um, news channel here. That's right. Shout out to the news in Norfolk. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. People are ready for something different and something new. You know, a lot of people... That, that, that's this only brands, but you know it's very popular. You know the Ed Hardy styles and black label things with you know big fonts and um, big big prints that you know go wrap around the shoulder and wrap around the sides. People are ready for something with with some meaning or some substance. But at the same time, you know hot hot cool designs, and that's exactly what we're we're here for. That's exactly what we, what we want to do. So we, I think we will bring a whole new flavor, a whole new element to our, our brand. So yeah. I'm pretty excited. Very nice. So, is, other than the HammondT.com website, uh, do you have a Facebook account? Yes. We do have a Facebook fan page. You, you um, go to Facebook and you and you type in um, HammondT, you search, and it'll, it'll come right up. Right. right now, we don't have that many fans. We just started. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, my actual name on Facebook is HammondT Allen. So you put it in the heaven T and you don't get the fan page, you will find me and then from there we can get you to the fan page. Okay. Very nice. And also my my Facebook, personal Facebook is under Hamilton Davis. You can find me there as well. So like I said, we're just we're building up the fan page still, but we got it going. We just need to <laughs> keep it going. So <laughs> in, in, other words, if you, in other words, if you're on Facebook and you want to find us, just follow the ham, baby. We will find you. <laughs> Just follow, yeah, just follow the ham. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like it's all turned into a Dr. Seuss story here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Well, I'll put up all the links when we do the rebroadcast on Zombie Popcorn. I'll put up all the links to both the Facebooks and to com. All right. Is there anything uh, else you want to... What's that? You can catch us on Twitter, too. Oh, you got a Twitter account? Yeah. I'll throw that yeah, up there. Yeah. What's the account? Ham, I don't know it by heart. It's uh, backslash Hammond I mean, backslash, backslash uh, Hammond T. Yeah, twitter.com slash so, so. Hammond T. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very nice. Well, I want to thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. Is there anything else you want to add, throw out there, give a shout out to, or talk about? Mm. You got something to say, Hammond? I don't have too much to say. 
just go to the website, hammondteeth.com. Uh, check us out. Uh, you see us downtown Norfolk or anywhere. Uh, if you want to talk to us, if you just, you know, just like the brand or if you got ideas yourself, you just want to talk, we're, we're down for that also. So, uh, about it. Yeah, definitely. Well, I want to thank you guys for taking the time talking to us. I really like the idea you got going on at HammondT.com. I recommend everyone, especially all the locals, support the locals and go to HammondT.com and support the two hams here. HammondT.com. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. That was it. HammondT.com. Everybody should go check it out. So, um, Where's Hawson? Am I not hearing Hawson? Where are you, Hawson? Talk to me, Hawson. Can you hear me? Gotcha. Yeah, um, I was saying uh, it's a good interview. I want a Ninja Turtle t-shirt. You want a Ninja Turtle? Well, you know where to get it. <laughs> That's awesome. So, I'll, the video that they were talking about in the interview, I will play going out um, for the last thing going out so they can you can see their video with their their t-shirts in it um because i, I want to make sure we get in all of our topics before because we're starting we're getting close to oh uh, look at that i lost hassan again <laughs> but we're getting close to the end um so yeah anyway Hawson, we lost you. But there's there's a couple things I want to I want to throw in here to talk about real quick before we get to um, the end of the show, because I saw the most amazing zombie thing the other day, and I know I'm a little late on the boat about posting it. But if you want to if you want to see this, go to zombiepopcorn.com um, and go to the post. Choose your own adventure book. I mean movie, because. When I was a kid, I'm sure a lot of people, um, when they when they were younger, had the um, choose your own adventure books. The that, person whom you're trying to reach. We lost him, but anyway, had the um, choose your own adventure books. You know, where you read the book and you get to a certain point in the book when it says, "Okay, if you choose this, go to page 19. If you choose this, go to page 34." They were very popular with me and a bunch of my friends, and I'm sure you know if anybody remembers these books, they were popular with them. Well, a pizza company down in New Zealand. Um, is it New Zealand? Yeah, New Zealand. Um, did an interactive zombie movie adventure, and it's exactly like the Choose Your Own Adventure books, but... It's done on YouTube. Um, if you go to zombiepopcorn.com, you can actually see it. And it's actually r real fun. And and you would not think that this is a commercial. You think, you know, it's a pizza commercial. It's it's cheesy and, you know, pun intended um, and dumb. But this is like a real independent zombie movie. And your choices are excellent and fun. Um, and if you, make the, if you make the wrong choice, you die. And... I, I want to play just a, a small clip of this real quick to give you an idea that this is not just your typical commercial. This is really amazing marketing, real amazing. The pizza company is called Hell Pizza, and their pizza boxes fold up into coffins, and it's it's really creative. There 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 are none in um, the U.S. Uh, they're only in. New Zealand, Canada, they just opened up one in Canada, coming soon in Canada, the UK, and um, I think Germany is the other one. But it, in the meantime, here is the their commercial, uh, their Choose Your Own Adventure zombie movie. It is phenomenal. Hey, Hausen. Or not, we just lost. <laughs> but anyway, here's here's the movie.
What's wrong with your voice? Did you just wake up? Are you coming up? Oh. Oh. One double last. Oh, stink! It's delivery! I'll deliver my pizza. Oh, come on, I can help. You'll be bitten. It's no blood. It's no blood. It's, it's, it's... I can help. You should deliver the paper. Come on, come on, come on, please. So this is where you choose your own Make adventure. Do you let him in? Decision. Or do you leave him behind? And this continues throughout oh, the whole movie. It's dear. so long. You're running out of time. And it's, it is awesome. You can actually pick. Let's leave him behind. Make up your mind. <laughs> but anyway, that's where we're going to stop it. Because I want, if you if you want to do the, if you want to do it, you sh you should actually go and make your choice. That it's looks amazing. It is. It's an, and it's a commercial. And that's what makes wow. it, makes it awesome. Is that it's it's well, it's not really a commercial. It's just, it's an adver it's an ad advertisement, and they're having a contest where you can get a year supply or a lifetime supply of pizza um, by doing this adventure movie and everything but it's it's it is it is totally awesome I love how they t a pizza company really embraces their I guess you know the the horror industry and, and the zombie fans and I mean their, their pizza company is called Hell Pizza so wow but that's really smart it's really smart marketing but you would never see that here in the US that's the sad part you would never see a company do this in the US well you know, they have to sell pizza, and, like, people here are very, like, it's very formulated. Nobody's taking a chance, you know? Yeah. Very cool. It is sad. But, um, <laughs> I, I just wish some companies here would kind of just step, step up to their game and um, give us something fun. Give us something like Hell Pizza. <laughs> no. Jason, the only thing you're gonna get is Geico and progressive commercials over and over again. <laughs> That's what we're all about here. And Swiffer, don't forget Swiffer. Oh, yeah, Swiffer. <laughs> wow, that was pretty cool. As soon as the show's done, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna choose my own adventure. You should, because it's, it's, 
it's fun. Miley did it with me, or she, I did it before when I first found out about it, and then she did it, and she made it all the way through without dying. Really? Yeah. Wow. But I was always trying to, you know, anyway, I don't want to give anything away. Everybody should go to zombiepopcorn.com and choose your own adventure. It, yes, you I'm definitely coffee. checking it out. Huh? Oh, yeah, I told him about the coffin. It's like the the pizza box. You'll see you'll see a photo of it on Zombie Popcorn. But you, you have your regular pizza box, and then when you, when you have leftovers and when you're done, you can fold the box on, up, and it becomes a coffin. <laughs> that's amazing it's and if you go to their website which is their website's linked from zombiepopcorn.com um you can check out their menus and stuff and they have really creative names and it's, it's just a where really, is, where really is this awesome from place. is this in uk this is in new zealand but there is oh, one new in, zealand that's where their headquarters is there is one in the uk um one coming to canada um and i think the other ones were germany I can't, but i can't remember exactly but they're not in the u.s i know that Hey, maybe it's for me, Garvey, you know, over here, too. Oh, yeah, too. they have vegan options, too, so. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, so. Wow, good stuff. I can't wait to check it out, the whole thing. It is pretty awesome. But it is now 9 o'clock, um, so I think we may be wrapping up Zombie Popcorn. That was a good show. Uh, I'm sorry for the technical troubles. Oh, no, it happens. We always have technical troubles. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, thanks for having me. Well, thanks for coming on. You know, you're welcome anytime to come on the show. Thank you. Uh, I always have so much fun. Yeah, it's a, it's always fun having you on. Yeah. And thank you, Jen, and, and thank you, 3D Movie Man, in the chat room for hanging out with us. Um, thanks, guys. Well, I'm gonna end the show with the Sugar Junkie video, which um, was talked about in the Ham and Tea interview. So. Everybody have a great night. Uh, thank you for listening to Zombie Popcorn Radio. Thank you, Hassan. Thank you, 3D Movie Man. And thank you, Jen. Thanks, guys. Have a great night. Wait, I gave you the wrong video. Let me, <laughs> that's, let me go to the other video. Here we go. Sorry about that.
I say the shit all day. I sing it with me, that's the last thing. It ain't your last name, but I'ma call you that because you asked me if that's the last thing to make the last thing. I say the shit all day. Problem. You got me out here cursing at you and you getting all mad at me and I'm mad that you get mad. I didn't do anything wrong. I care about me. Why are you doing all this shit right I'm not in front of me? I'm doing it on anyone. I'm not looking at anyone. I'm sitting here with you. you how much time we spent the other day? It's been a great day and you sit here mad at this shit. Nothing's going on. Nothing's going on. Like, seriously. I'm just here with you. Do you even have dignity? I'm looking at you right now. Who else am I looking at? There's literally no one else here. There's not, not another person in this room.